This is Serpents and Saviors Part 2. I'm not going to recover. You just got to remember the brass serpent on the pole and look at it and live. And I talked about the four types of believers, the carnal believer and the self-righteous believer and the, the growing Christian and the crucified Christian and how they all fit into that example. But now I want to try to make it practical in just a real brief way. So I'll give you a situation and you can fill in the gaps in this in any number of ways. Here's a situation. Your friend, you're struggling at your job. You can't make ends meet. And your friend who's already doing well gets a promotion. And she wants you to be happy for her. And you're smiling and gritting your teeth. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. When really, you're struggling greatly with jealousy. So if we're living in a law-based system, our approach is to immediately feel guilt because the law is revealing our jealousy. I shouldn't feel jealous. I feel terrible that I feel jealous. I must be a terrible friend. We wrestle with the thought. We try to die to self. I'm going to die to jealousy. No, I mean it. I'm going to die to jealousy. I'm going to die hard to self. So what do we do? We're like, well, I'm going to bake her a pie and show her how happy I am. We come up with all the ways to try to prove what we aren't. And we, we take the pie over and, you know, we're gritting through our teeth. I'm so happy for you. You're doing well and I celebrate this with you. And all the while, on the inside, you're just fuming with jealousy. How does that Savior on the cross and that serpent on the pole tell us? Because there's poison. The poison of jealousy has bitten you. So admit it. Quit pretending. Admit you're jealous. And from the strength of your spirit, turn your mind to the cross and see jealousy nailed there in a fang bite on the body of Christ. See jealousy coursing through his veins as the poison of sin in the earth. And this is the particular poison that is bothering you. But he actually took it in his body. And died to it. And you keep looking at that. And you, you are creatively allowing your spirit to enter into that timeline. Now we're in holy time. Now we're in Sabbath time. Where God actually invested a day called Calvary with his divine presence. And he invites you to look at that and keep looking at that until your soul finds rest. Which is when the body of Christ slumps into death, and he says it's finished, and you realize jealousy in you died in him. You aren't hiding from it. You aren't pretending your way around it. You aren't baking pies to convince everyone that you aren't really jealous. No, you are, and it dies with him. You say, well, I tried that, and it didn't work. First off, have you? And if so, try again. Keep looking. Look until you believe. That's the point. To look and live. Here's a valid criticism of this process. You say it takes too long. You know, I do that and I don't really feel as changed as I want to feel. This is the trick of the law. Because the law offers short-term solutions. If you just bake the pie and smile and convince yourself you've done the right thing and somehow have satisfied a checklist of external morality, then you can move on and claim victory. Well, I didn't, I didn't yield to that. I responded in the opposite spirit. I didn't yield to that. I did the right thing. But is your heart changed or not? Is your character remade or not? The work of the new creation is a finished work that's working itself out. By one sacrifice, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. 
You're laying a hold of something that's working its way out in your reality. And so short term, it takes a little more time. I'm going to end with a session on that. It takes a little more time, but it's the only real change. Because the next time it comes around, you're still going to struggle with the same jealousy if you aren't actually renewing your mind to bring that thing to full death. Say, well, I feel like I should be doing something about this. That's actually an anti-Christ sentiment because if you could do something about it, Jesus wasn't necessary. 